welcome to Emily Kate Made This. I am Emily Kate and I'm coming to you from Berlin in Germany. This is a sewing and, well, mainly knitting podcast, vlogcast, vlog, um, but I also have some sewing. So today I have one knitted finished object, one sewing finished object and two, no, three works in progress. So let's get to it. But first, as usual, Tea. Tea is required. So, first things first, if you watched my last podcast, vlog, vlogcast, whatever, you will have seen that I made a vintage, uh, I'm just looking to, I think I might be slightly wonky. Hang on a minute. <laughs> is that better? I think so. <laughs> I'm not sure. Anyway, if you saw my last uh, episode, I was wearing my first vintage knitwear. That, that's not even the right word. The first vintage knitted item that I have knitted. <laughs> and it got me into vintage knitting big time. I have got so many patterns now, it's ridiculous. <laughs> but going along from that, I had another, I did show you. A pattern that I wanted to do and ta-da! I'm wearing it, it's done. It is and again I'm really uncomfortable naming the pattern designer of this because it's super racist but it was done in the 1930s or 1940s I don't have control of this and if I don't tell you then you'll ask so I'm just gonna show you. <laughs> um, here we go. So, I made this one, and here it is. I did do some modifications. My last one was, was supposed, I actually haven't measured this, should do that. The last one was supposed to be 32, 32 inches across. Mine came out, what was it? It was supposed to be 33 inches across. I am 32 and it came out at 34 but I think I just blocked it a bit too much. Um, this one I purposefully went down some needle sizes and um, I can see, did I write it down? Yes I did. So it recommended 4 millimeters and 6.5 but it's an old pattern so it's UK number 8 and UK number 3 and I was supposed to get 15 stitches by 20 in 4 inches but I actually changed it and I did a 3 millimeter rib to make it more kinched in and 5.5 millimeter which is what I did on my last one and I I found that when I had the uh, the 5.5 was for this I think the ribbing I did the 4 or the 4.5 I need to check unless you've already seen it in my last video but basically it's beautiful and I love it but I thought that it was going to be much more kinched in at the waist and um, it wasn't it was quite long I just did it to pattern knowing that I'm short and that it would be too long but I was just curious and I did take out one pattern repeat from that one but I should probably have taken about three inches off and this one I took out a whole pattern repeat and I also shortened the ribbing from the recommended four and a half inches of ribbing and I just did three so it is significantly less because I just don't want ribbing all the way down here and there was there is a slight or possibly is possibly isn't a slight issue that I have in that when I made my last one, it's quite long, so I didn't notice this issue, but I essentially like balloon sleeved my torso because I did this three millimeter and then 5.5 and it kind of rolls over. And I was really upset with this because it made me, it basically looks like knitted fat rolls, which I know that probably sounds really un PC, but, but you know what I mean? And I'm not trying to be cruel or anything. It's just, what it looked like and 
It has improved, I think. I, I basically blocked it flat, because you knit it flat. You knit and then you purl, and then you seam it together. So I blocked them separately, then I seamed them, and then I put it on, and it did the, the whole knitted fat roll thing. And it was just a surprise. I wasn't expecting that look. Um, but then when I went through Instagram looking for 1940s patterns, I noticed it's actually kind of a normal thing. It's not on an actual body for you to see it on here, but if you look at some pictures of the women in this kind of general style, it does fold over a little bit, which is probably completely normal if you think about a sleeve that you do, say, like three millimeters, and then you get a balloon sleeve if you go up to 5.5 or 6. So obviously that happened, but I didn't realize. But I blocked it last night, or rewashed it last night, and I'm hoping it kind of sits a little bit better now that the seaming has relaxed a bit. Um, but I haven't measured it, so I should do that. <laughs> I was going to do that yesterday, but then I thought, oh, I'll do it tomorrow before my podcast, and now I'm doing it, and I didn't measure. So, sorry. But I mean, it's kind of irrelevant anyway, even if you had this pattern and you did these, used these needles, blah, 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 used these needles, you'd still get a different gauge anyway, so it's pretty irrelevant, really. <laughs> but very much enjoyed knitting this. I, I also enjoyed it because I cut off like four inches of fabric, so it was even faster than the last one. <laughs> and I finally used my needles that I purchased back in 2020 when I started knitting I just went to some local store it was the only one that was open and had crafting supplies and everywhere online was still about a month to two months waiting if you wanted to order something and actually receive it so I just picked up it's a bunch of cheap wooden I don't know if they're bamboo but they're wooden needles and that's how I learned to knit like I used those and yeah, then I picked out this baby, but I was already using my um, Chiagu 5.5 and 3. So I hunted, found those, used them, and yeah, I actually really liked using these wooden needles. I don't know, they, they were like 3 euro for about, I don't know, loads, like 25 needles. I know it's terrible, like morally, ethically. I wouldn't do that now, but then I had no idea about any of this and that was the only option that I had um, in the quarantine days. And yeah, so I'm happy now that I've uh, been able to use them and use them for something so beautiful, if I do say so myself. I adore this colour. It is, uh, did I bring it, is that it? I'm not sure. I think that's it. This could also be the white one, but I think this is this. It is Onion Knits. Will that focus in my face? Why do I ever try? <laughs> it is Onion Knit number four, organic wool and nettles, 70% organic wool, 30% um, nettle. This one is the DK weight. Um, 50 grams is 130 meters, and color I think is 808. It's this berry or wine color. I am very much in love with this color. I kind of want to make everything in this color because I have, and I'm probably, I am probably, I have probably said multiple times, I have so many clothes, ones that I've purchased, ones that I've made, and nothing ever goes together and I, I never know how to dress because none of the colours match or everything has a pattern so there's just so much pattern going on and I bought this, I bought one skein of this for myself for Christmas in 2021 and it just sat on my shelf because I didn't know what anyone does with 50 grams of DK and uh, yeah that just sat there then when I made my, um, the last one, the other one I made, 
I used this wool but in white and I really liked it so I purchased three more balls and, and I only used like, what did I use? One and a half, one and three quarters of a skein or something, a skein, a ball for this, I think. Gosh, I'm so unprepared. I, I only just finished it, like, less than a week ago, and now my brain has gone, you don't need this information, whoop. So, sorry, hopefully I found it and I've remembered it and I've put it down somewhere, down below. But anyway, yeah, this colour apparently is the colour that goes with everything. I have, like, this skirt, for example, which you won't be able to see. Can I show you? I don't know. It's awesome, actually. It's cool. <laughs> I need to show you from a distance. I'll try and insert a picture. But uh, basically, I, this is such a random tangent. Sorry, guys. This skirt I bought in New Zealand when I lived there, and I found it, and it was glorious, but it was so small. The, the friend that I was living with, she is a wonder woman of many talents, and she said, don't worry, I'll just add some extra fabric. I'm not sure if you can see this. Um, can you? She took out the zip, and then I had a bag that's the exact colour. And so she cut up that bag, it was dying anyway, and I was a backpacker, so everything was kind of half decrepit. So she cut that up, and added it into the back of the skirt, redid the zip, and it's beautiful, and I adore the skirt, and now I can wear it, well, now I can wear it, then I could wear it, and yet nothing really goes because you don't you can't really have blue because it's just too much blue and then the pinks that i wear are just too like baby or like powder pink and it's got a bit of white but it's not really white because it's kind of gray but not and so i usually just show a black top or a white and it looks a bit weird but it's fine and now this is like the perfect color for it so that's delightful then I bought some summer trousers a few years ago that also, there's so many colours on them, it just doesn't go with anything. Except this. So I'm so delighted. Also, you might think I'm incredibly high on caffeine because I feel so overly energetic. But actually, in the first, I don't know how long I've actually been doing these podcasts, but this is the first time that I'm alone in the house. And my husband isn't like behind the wall or just over there. And I'm like just able to talk at full volume <laughs> and I feel weirdly liberated like I can just be free and talk to you guys and not worry that he's going to come out or that he'll hear me so that's probably why I am a little bit delusional in joy is that a word? not really I'm overexcited, let's say that I'm also so overexcited that I bit my cheek earlier and now every time I talk I kind of bite down on it and I it, ow ow so if I do that <laughs> that's why oh deep breath Emily let's calm down so should have mentioned this earlier but I will add timestamps in case you don't actually want to listen to any of this waffle and you have a specific place that you want to go to. I'll try to talk about my sewing at the end because some people aren't interested in sewing. Madness, but it's true. So I will wait for that finished object till the end. So have I covered everything? I've covered the pattern, the yarn. I also used to be obsessed wearing these pearls in Ireland when I lived there and then I kind of stopped and since making these vintage tops, I'm just, I'm loving these pearls again. <laughs> so, one final look-see on my glorious, wonderful top. And um, what else can I say? It, yeah, it's knitted flat. It's basically a square or a rectangle. And then you add um, some stitches on the sides. So these are part of it. Like, <laughs> you just add some extra stitches. So, what do you guys think? Shall I continue making lots more vintage knitted items? Because I think so. I have another two or three that I want to make. I've got three of these magazines. This is number 15. I think the last one that I made it from was something like number 6 um, or 10. 
and I also have leaflet number one. So, also I'm not 100% sure how old these are, there's just like zero information about them. If you find them on eBay or Etsy or anywhere, it's like circa 1930s, 1940s, 1950s. That's super vague, so I am unsure when this is, but we're going with 1940s based on when the company was... Um, I keep thinking gegründet in German and that is not the word I need. Founded? It came into existence at the end of the 1930s, apparently, and um, so I'm assuming that the mid, like, oh, oh, words, words have gone. We're going with 1940s, potentially, but it could be late 1940s, could be 1950s. Let's move on, shall we, <laughs> and put you over here. Um, let's start with the cactus crop tea. Last time, Ooh. last time I showed you this, I explained my issues that I had that I cast on for the first size, and it was meant to be about 36 inches and can't remember the exact numbers, but let's just pretend it's supposed to be 26 stitches per 4 inches. I was getting like 32, even though I swatched and I was getting gauge, but then apparently when I started mixing colours and it got really, really tight. And so I then went, ripped it all out and started again and did the second size, which is meant to be 40 inches. I am not 40 inches, so I thought that would drown me, but I think this is just about going to fit. <laughs> My gauge is so crazy off. I have been told when I block the woolly knit cone, it should hopefully fluff up a bit. My test swatch didn't really fluff up in the slightest, so apparently I can also put it in much hotter water, like smush it about a bit, like not felt it, but like massage it a bit and add more wool wash and that might help encourage fluffage um, because I think it looks kind of ugly I'm gonna show you but I think the stitch the difference why can't I talk I'll just show you I haven't done the neck band so it looks a bit weird And it's on a smaller cable, so you can't see that either, but imagine. Let's get a bit closer. So it is obviously a cactus tea. It has three colours in multiple rows, like here. And I just think that the fabric looks horrible. I think you can see everything. You can see every increase, every changing of like when I catch my floats, which I had to in places like here. And yeah, I know that blocking will help out the bumpy parts because I've, like even with this, it looks super bumpy, but then when you block it, it's grand. But yeah, I just think it looks so, like, not great. <laughs> and I, yeah, basically I have so much hope pinned on blocking, it's going to be glorious, that that is why I'm just going to keep going and it's going to be amazing, like just no question, it's going to be amazing. I'm so happy to be off the colour work because having three cones on the go and catching floats which then twists the yarn and then having to like untwist them and ah, uh, the rage, the rage! But alas! That is over. I have finished. I have separated from my sleeves. I have been able to put it on a like one of these cable things and it does go over my head. It does go over my boobs. All is well. I just imagined when I looked at it, this is a tiny, tiny, tiny piece of clothing. But it does stretch out enough. Then I'm going to add the ribbing on the neck. 
haven't decided on needle size because that's going all over the show. I originally did it, I think, on 3mm and then I did 3.25 for this section and it was, yeah, so tight. Now it's still too tight, but if I use a single strand of woolly knit on a needle higher than 3.5, it just looks terrible. This is just not fingering weight that I'm used to. I'm used to like cl um, Arveta Classic fingering weight sock yarn and this feels to me like lace and again I assume it will fluff up to be the equivalent but I don't know sometimes when I'm knitting I'm like where's the yarn it's so thin I can't see it so yeah I really can't do it in, on any bigger needle and I'm sure you're just telling me through the screen just don't use that yarn Emily like it's obviously not suitable for that project use a different yarn I know I absolutely should have, especially when it went wrong the first time and then I just cast it on again. What I really wanted was to use the Chuku wool that was recommended. And it's probably a woolen spun and would probably work better. But it was so expensive and one day I will be able to afford it, but right now I can't. And I wanted to try the woolly knits and they were really good value when I bought them in the Black Friday sale. So I could use them for this colour work and I could use them for like more ranunculi, <laughs> ranunculuses and other things and it seemed like a genius idea. And now I'm just paying the price of being cheap and not getting the right yarn and just keep, keep going. So yeah, let's hope for fluffage. Pray for fluffage. I have realised that unfortunately I'm not a huge fan of fingering weight jumpers and knitting stockinette on tiny tiny needles and yarn. Like, like even here. It's so see-through. And um, this I have done 3.5 and I should have gone... What did I do? I don't know what I've done. I basically went down to 3.25 for this part and it would look so much better on like 2.5 needles but not gonna do that that would make it incredibly small and take me a lifetime I have so many fingering weight patterns that I've purchased or downloaded and I'm so excited to have them and now I'm really nervous that it's gonna be so painful <laughs> to knit them but it's gonna be okay going to be fine. I, I enjoy knitting. Maybe it's just the yarn. I'm just not loving my yarn experience, but it's going to be glorious. So I am, um, thank goodness, making this a cropped and it's short sleeved, so it's not going to last forever. I can't remember, but I probably need just like two inches of sleeve on either side. Here I am, where am I? I haven't got very far. I'm probably a quarter of the way through of the um, body. So lots of knitting and watching YouTubes. I'm also trying to teach myself how to knit without looking. So I have befriended a crochet hook. We are very close friends now because I keep dropping stitches. I'm really trying to watch someone on YouTube and focus or close my eyes and do it. Um, it's going quite well. I have tried it before and I just, I couldn't even find the yarn. Like it was just, uh, you know that exercise as a kid when you close your eyes and you have to bring your fingers and then bring them until you touch. It feels a little bit like that. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm using this um, jumper as a practice for both patience and for learning how to knit without looking because then it might not be quite so painful to knit stockinette on fingering weight yarn if I can just talk to someone or watch a movie or do something where I'm just like, yes, la 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 la, I don't have to just stare religiously at my needles. Also, I'm getting eye strain which makes me feel really old. Like I'm getting eye strain and then my, uh, my arms hurt, like my fingers hurt from knitting. 
I don't even knit for that long. I knit and it's uncomfortable immediately, but not painful. And then when I start to feel an actual pain, twinge of pain, then I stop and put it down and do something else. I stretch, I'll wash up, just, just, yeah. Don't want to get to that stage. When I started knitting, that's what happened. I was knitting an English style and it was just pain, just intense pain all the time, even when I wasn't knitting. Uh, so I had to learn continental, which is actually an issue I have from, I think my first or second episode, I showed you guys a shawl that I wanted to use to use, to use, to make, to use up some bulky weight yarn. And it's on 10 or 12 millimeter needles and I can't knit it. I can't knit Continental with my left hand, bulky needle, bulky needles and bulky yarn. I just physically can't do the purl stitch or really hold the needle properly. So I have to use English style. And once I've done one row, the pain goes all the way up my finger and I just can't knit. The last time I tried, I did one row and I couldn't knit for three days because there was so much pain in my finger. So this project is just sitting there now for like a year. I'm hoping I can just pass it on to someone else to finish and um, maybe my mum. And so I can use up the yarn because I've done a relatively big chunk of it and I'll never be able to use the yarn anyway. So ripping it out seems painful. And I would quite like the end result because it would just be a nice snuggly blanket. So yeah, anyone wanna knit my shawl? <laughs> So back to this, what have I told you? I've told you mixed reviews, I've told you the yarn, I've told you the pattern. Yeah, I think that's all I have to say about it for now. And hopefully the next time that I see you, it won't probably be finished, but a good chunk. Maybe I could put it on. Maybe there'll be a neckband, who knows. And we will never ever use Woolly Knit again for a fingering weight jumper that requires tuku wool instead, because obviously they are not a good swap out. Okay, that's that one. Oop, on to, I was going to say on to greener pastures. I have no idea what I'm talking about today. I'm sorry. I'm so overly excited. <sighs> New cast on. When I was in the middle of some three rows in of colour work. Three rows. Oh Emily, let's start again. There are multiple rows within the cactus crop that have three strands of colour and some of them are fine because they I don't know how to explain it but they go they flow quite easily. But some of them when you have to catch the colour quite often you've got to catch the both both of the colours at different times and I was getting stressed because I couldn't concentrate or it was going wrong or... I don't know, it was probably just my mood, it was probably fine. <laughs> but I just wanted the colour, three colour rows to be done and I was procrastinating and I cast on like, a couple of things and one of them was to just completely be so completely different from a fingering weight colour work jumper. So, I cast on the Felix cardigan. Uh, yeah, there's really nothing to show you. It blends in with my cardigan jumper. Uh, you can probably see the lace there, maybe. I don't know. It doesn't look great to show you now, but it will be great. I am using Retrosaria Poma. Can't pronounce it. Biora. Bi. B E I R R O. I don't know. I'll put it somewhere here. Glorious yarn. The stickiest yarn I have ever used. I. I don't. Sometimes people say, oh, this yarn is quite sticky. And I think. I'm assuming that means something to do with like when you stick it, it, it doesn't come apart. Now I know what sticky means because. It's like it almost sticks to itself as you're knitting. Uh, like the knitting side of it, it's knitted flat, so the knitting side is okay, but when I'm purling, it's somehow more difficult to like, 
I'm not doing a good job at explaining this. It's very sticky, very rustic. It is a single ply of Portuguese wool and I first came across this when I saw Kat and I always forget her Instagram handle because I just know, oh, Olive, and then that must be her. It's like Olive Trees and the Moon or something. She made a beautiful jumper and it was in this yarn and I was determined one day I will get this yarn. And I think it was last year I ordered it to make my Humlebi shawl, but I didn't understand anything then about plies. I'm still not 100% certain I understand plies, but a single ply won't show up, like cables as well, apparently. So the more plies, the rounder, and then you get like a better st stitch definition. So the bees weren't really coming out that great. And it's woolen spun, so, so a woolen one ply spun yarn. So I thought that would be great for a cardigan. Let's do that. <laughs> I should have enough. And it's a beautiful colour. And I had like an out of body weird experience where I finished the white, not the white version, but the other vintage top and it's knitted flat. And I was knitting a sock, I think, and I was also knitting this cactus crop and I missed purling. I know, these words just came out of my mouth. I missed purling. Never ever has that ever happened to me and I thought I have wanted to want to purl for so long <laughs> I'm holding on to this. I have the um, Felix pullover but I never purchased the pattern for the, um, the cardigan because I knew it was purling and I didn't want to purl. And I purchased the pattern and I cast it on. <laughs> I know I could probably have put on my brain and figured out how to make the, the jumper pattern into a cardigan but sometimes I just don't want to think I'm not great with numbers and I just want like I don't even know how much it is six or seven euro and I thought the amount of time I'm going to spend trying to figure this out and the button band and all the things I'm just going to spend the six euro or seven euro so I did and I cast on and all is well, so far so good. I have about three or four more rows to go until I split for the sleeves and then I fully intend to keep practicing on my not looking and knitting. I can't do it with purling, I'm not there yet, <laughs> but one day, maybe by, maybe by the arms, whoops, maybe by the arms I can practice the purling but uh, I don't know. <laughs> but I'm excited for it. I think it's also going to fluff up a little bit in um, blocking. So then it'll kind of seal it together a bit. I've got, I've got three skeins. I've got no idea where the ball band is, but I think it should be enough. So wish me luck. I feel like I've just really flown through this, but I guess there isn't that much to explain. So. Here it is. My, my final half finished object, although I have started the other half, it's pretty boring, but it's a sock. It is a DK weight sock. I used hot socks. I'll try and link the colorway below, but I don't love yarn. I think it might just simply be because I've been using the word rustic yarns like this Rosa Pomor one and the woolly knits and yeah this is really nylon-y like I can actually see it and feel it and I'm not a huge fan um I don't know I I have really mixed feelings about these there's nothing wrong with them they really they're really quick to make I think the idea was that they were going to be for my husband because they were quite blue but then it just they're self-striping and the blue just went on and on and on and I was annoyed because there's so much blue in one stripe and then they got kind of pink and they got more pink and more purple and he wasn't really a fan and I wasn't a fan of knitting it and uh, so now I've just got this misc sock 
that I think I'm going to gift to somebody because I have so many socks and I have so many plans for more socks and more colourwork socks and lace socks that I would happily keep and wear but I don't know that I need another pair of self-striping DK socks so they will probably be a gift lovingly given but I, yeah I just don't need them and I'm annoyed about this because I wanted to use this yarn for my husband's socks and now he doesn't have them and I don't really want to buy more nylon -y sock yarn like this even though it's nice oh I feel like I should just get rid of this whole section talking about the sock because I sound so grumpy and miserable and I'm not <laughs> they're fine they're they're grand there's nothing really to talk about I followed the stitch count um, for the biscuit socks which I've made before and shown you and I really enjoy her heel um, instructions so I'll link that below and I just did a kitchener toe in that pattern she does the rounded toe? I don't know, you pull it up like it's a hat this one is kitchener stitch and I just prefer that it looks nicer, I feel it's more fun to do so there's my sock okay so that is all my knitting chat so thank you for watching if you're only interested in the knitting um, I hope it was more positive than my memories of what I was saying are because I'm not negative about it I'm just expressing my, myself what is it like when you're ranting like when people rant about their kids or their boyfriends or husbands it doesn't mean you don't love them you just need to get it off your chest that's how I feel about my knitting right now um, yeah I do have more plans for more cast-ons um, but I will just show you them as they come up I think I'm going to make another vintage tea. I might cast on a different one that's going to be on the needles for a long time because I've looked up the hashtag and the very few people that have made it have struggled and uh, yeah, that doesn't bring me encouragement, but we'll see. Um, yeah, so thank you if this is all you've come for. Otherwise, let's talk sewing. Um, I did want to show you the final finished object of this sew sewing dress. <laughs> sewed dress. <sighs> I did want to show you the finished final garment, but the, um, the company that I ordered the linen fabric from never sent me a um, we have sent your parcel message. So I contacted them and they said their machines had broken and that they couldn't dye anything, any fabric but it should be fixed and they should send it by May 2nd so I hope that's what happens because otherwise I've been like, frauded <laughs> but alas I have done a practice dress and hopefully the real linen will arrive so you can use your imaginations here I this dress also has a, a history without actually being in existence yet my friend is getting married in July and I wanted to make a dress for her wedding. I am her bridesmaid, so I'm sure when she heard me say that she was stressed because she's trying to get everybody, like their clothing, to the colours to match and just in general weddings are stressful and then having someone go, oh yeah, but I want to make my own, <laughs> probably wasn't very calming on her nerves, but she's open open to the idea and I I purchased the fabric I really hope the colour is right but if she says either I don't like the dress or the colour is wrong sorry that's totally fine I am fine with that I will wear it to my friend's wedding who's getting married earlier in July so I'll show the, the first <laughs> I will show the bridesmaid dress first and then if it's a no I can wear it regardless and I'm looking forward to making that it it's a free pattern it's from the fabric store it's called I think it's pronounced Aya I would pronounce it Aya A-J-A uh, it's 
a very, very low deep neck V dress. Um, I'm going to show you and then put it back and then I'll try and insert a clip of me wearing it. Um, this was just a practice because I've never made the dress and I don't want to cut into really expensive nice fabric and then go, oops. So it obviously comes down really low. I think I might need to get a hook and eye, like just one maybe to bring it in. Oops. Sorry, just flipping the bird there. <laughs> there we go, how's that? Bring it in a bit. But I would like to ask a super weird question. Does anyone have any boob tape recommendations? Yes, I have asked this really weird question. Basically, when I stand up, I think this dress is really nice. Um, it like, I can't wear a bra with it because it comes so low that the part of the bra that goes between the cups is just right there. Hello, I am present. So I can't wear a bra. But I did think, how can I make a bra that basically is exactly this shape? So if anyone knows how to do that, I would love to hear from you because I'm a bit lost there. But otherwise, I've been told I can just put some boob tape here so that when I sit down, it doesn't just open. Because when I sit, this just goes, ah, and that's just inappropriate. <laughs> I'm gonna hang this up now. Yeah, I really like the dress. I really like the style. I have such an obsession with really deep V-neck dresses and then I can never wear them because you need a bra and you can't wear a bra. And then when you don't wear a bra, it's like, hello world, this is my birthday suit. So I think I need to get some boob tape for the wedding. And otherwise, if anyone can help or knows of anywhere that I could make a bra that I could wear under there. It doesn't need to be like a super fancy bra with clipping, like clippings? <laughs> with clips or anything, but just literally fabric to stop the world and the wedding party seeing, seeing all the goods. Uh, so the fabric that will be coming is linen and it's green and I think it's going to be really nice. I, I had a bit of an issue with the, I should probably bring that dress back <laughs> to explain. I'll try and insert some pictures, that would probably be easier. There's no zip and it doesn't like button up at the side or and it doesn't slip over but in the center it has like a zip fly but without the zip it's like a button part like a male trousers with jeans that they button up and it's a concealed one and then at the top here you see like the decorative button but it is a functional button as well to close but underneath it has two or three buttons to close it and that zip fly section got my mind, it like blew my mind. I, there were pictures, that just the instructions are excellent, I just didn't get it. I think because they used a lining and like the, the linen that they use in their pictures is blue and the front of it's blue and the back of it's blue and sometimes when you see a um, instruction when you see the pictures you can tell where what's the front and what's the back of the fabric the right side or wrong side so you go oh okay they're putting that there right okay and this one I just I couldn't tell and I managed it like it's fine there's one section I did do wrong and it's kind of made it pook a little bit which isn't hugely obvious but I think with linen that's a thicker fabric it's gonna if there's a pook it's gonna be really big so I need to practice that again somehow. Um, not sure how, because I don't have tons of fabric just lying around for practice, but I will give it another go, I think. Um, the other thing was I don't do very well with, when you gather a skirt and then you add the, the um, waistband, 
you do, you kind of sew it together from the other side and you can't see the gathers so you can't always evenly distribute them and I think it was the, I'm not explaining this well, I'm sorry, I hope anyone listening is like super patient. <laughs> But basically, when I did the, bun the waistband and attached it, some of the uh, gathers just got all puckered and... Hey, let me just show you again. So, this is relatively fine. I'm not really bothered that much. That, that bothers me greatly. And like I could rip it out and redo it, but then you get it's really obvious when you re sew and then go backwards and forwards, then you sew and then you go backwards and forwards, it's going to be really obvious. And it happened over here and somewhere here. Oh, that really bothers me. Um, what's that? It seems to be. Oh dear, there's a kind of a hole in the fabric. Here's the button fly that I was trying to desperately explain. The buttons are on there, and that one's done up. Um, also, it has a split that goes up here, up the front, which I also made, and I'm really short, and so it was down here. Um, I actually had to cut should have cut. I, f I had a major, a major brain fart. I, I know how to hem a dress. I know how to make a dress. And I saw that the dress was really long. I thought I need to bring up the hem. So I tried it on and I pinned it up into place so I could see, yep, that's a good length. But then I just sewed it. I didn't cut off the extra fabric and then re-hem it. I just sewed the whole thing together. And then when I was looking at it, I thought, why is there a big line of sewing there? Like, like right here. I just folded that whole thing on the inside. Why? <laughs> so it's a test dress and to be honest, I don't care enough to undo it all. Maybe I will later, like if it bothers me. But yeah, I just thought, oh Emily, you need to just take a break. <laughs> but I did have to then get the seam ripper out and um, make this slit higher. Because otherwise it's just like, where it should end is just above the knee and mine was just tickling underneath my underneath the knee. And it just looked a bit weird. And now I can walk much easier. Um, it's a lined dress, which I like, because I hate facings, I hate facings. I'm bias binding is fine, but I'm still, like I've got a dress and I think I just stretched it a bit too much and, mm. and I also don't use really expensive fabric, so it's quite thin, so having a lining makes the fabric a little bit um, nicer. So the bottom part isn't lined, but the bodice is. Um, what else? It has some pockets. Pockets are great. Love me some pockets. Um, what else can I say? I'm really bothered now about this whole... But it's fine, it's fine. I can't do anything about it, so... <sighs> so, that is my dress. Hopefully I will get the fabric that I ordered. And... Yeah, I just... I love dresses with these deep Vs and... I keep making them. And I can't really wear them. <laughs> because... Of the obvious. So I need some boob tape recommendations, please, or some bra recommendations, please. Just an easy triangle bra is fine. I don't need anything crazy complicated. Um, hopefully that dress doesn't look too uh, risque at a wedding. I think it's kind of, it plays along the, you look like... I don't want to be rude. Yeah, let's just leave it with, you shouldn't wear that to a wedding, or that is quite elegant. And I'm going, just praying for the elegant side of things.
what else? What else have I got to tell you? I've talked about my knitting. I have talked about my sewing. I am surrounded right now by bags and bags of my wool. I don't think you'll actually notice, but I have taken out over the last two weeks. Yeah, two weeks. I freaked out because I found a moth in my cupboard. It was in my food cupboard. And when I posted about this on Instagram, a lot of people went, oh, don't worry, it's uh, just a food moth. Worry, people, worry, because 2020, we did a massive purchase of food. Just before, actually, it was kind of funny, we didn't actually know about the future quarantine-ness of life. And we just purchased loads of food in bulk and then it happened to be that then um, lockdown happened. And within something, we think the dates, there was a moth and it distributed its mothiness all over our food pantry and we had to throw away so much food. It was awful. And they stayed there for so long, like every day we were finding new cocoons, new moths, new like these tiny little larvae things crawling up the walls. It was gross. Um, so I was vinegar, bottle, spraying everything, um, essential oils everywhere, wiping out everything I bought. I used, I did have a lot of things in the Vec jars or the um, Ikea flip top jars, but not everything. So anything that I didn't have in those jars was covered in moths and this like webbing it was gross and so this there is a point to this <laughs> so i just spent weeks cleaning and every day we saw a new one we just clean again until i thought they were all gone and then sometime around this time last year i imagine um i came across my period pants so i have um, period pants that I, where are they? Can't quite believe I'm going to show you this on the internet, but uh, it's fine. <laughs> For the ladies out there who care to listen, <laughs> I use period pants and the moon cup or menstrual cup and they are marvellous, I love them, and I wanted to make my own period pants, but uh, because I thought they'd be cheaper, but they're really not, <laughs> so I purchased some, and I have a pair that I just throw into my bag so that should it spontaneously arrive, should my period suddenly start um, out, I have my pants that I can use. So they're like, I've got my usual ones, and then I've got my spare ones, it's like having a tampon in your bag. And I decided to get them out and this. I then discovered this brand has got merino wool. I really hope that the YouTube um, video that it shows doesn't have this as the video when you you like put your mouse over and it gives you a preview because my last video I'm like oh I just one moment in that video I showed you I'm wearing a dress and that is the the clip that it shows so hopefully this is not the clip but yes my period pants were eaten by moths and I know it was moths because there was an actual moth sitting on this and another moth in the bag and I had it wrapped up in it was in a plastic sandwich bag and inside one of these, and uh, inside a backpack that was zipped closed. And there were two moths in there, and there were larvae, and I had to like boil wash this um, bag. And I can't, I couldn't throw these away because these are like 20 euro for a pair of pants. Admittedly, they're amazing, and you don't have to buy loads of tampons or loads of um, sanitary towels, but they, I'm not just going to be like, ah, oh, and then chuck them. So I decided at some point when I can sew properly, I'm going to learn how to insert some absorbency fabric into this and then make them period pants once again. But the main part of the story is that 
moths that eat your food also eat your knickers when they're made of wool. And so the other day, whatever it was, last week, two weeks ago, I saw another moth in my cupboard. Since 2021, I have had a lot of yarn brought into my life by myself. So I have been frantically throwing everything in the freezer. I had my first batch that was this top shelf. I put all of that into um, freezer bags. I haven't owned any freezer bags in years because I'm trying not to use plastic. And so I don't have plastic bags come into my life. But I did have some that I used to transport sauerkraut to and from the UK. Excuse me, I know I sound super weird, but I make my own sauerkraut. And then when I go to my parents, I would bring the sauerkraut with me to eat for the three weeks that I was there and package them in these plastic IKEA bags and then rinse them, bring them back and repeat every time I went. And so I've got those, some of them, not all of them have survived. And so I've been shoving all my yarn into them and putting them in the freezer for a week and then I've done one batch, then I, this is my second batch that's on the floor and I'm about to do this um, shelf, shelf's worth. Because I'm now terrified, if there's a moth in my food cupboard, there could be a moth in my yarn and that would be awful. So the moth stress is real, I, I do have cedar balls, I've got lavender sachets, I move it around a lot, but I can't, I can't have moths eating my yarn. I know that you're not supposed to put it on display because it's basically like, come hither moths and eat my yarn. But I don't have any more of these clear plastic boxes and they're really expensive. I don't know how people can afford so many of these plastic boxes. I've got two and they were kind of cheaper boxes, but they're not um, airtight. They're like, they just flip and you can flip them open, but you don't clip them in because they were much more expensive. And I don't, I don't want to put all of my yarn into these boxes and then put them in the basement because I haven't got anywhere to put boxes up here. So currently I'm just doing the whole freezer trick and hoping that that works. And it might just encourage me to use my yarn stash faster and then then I'll just do the same process, but with my knitted jumpers and knitted things and put them in the freezer every year and take them out. But I know, as I'm saying this, I'm, I'm so aware I should just get these boxes, but they're just so expensive. <laughs> so, I'm being, oh, and I can already, I'm already arguing with myself. Yes, but you spent much more on your yarn, so you should definitely get the boxes. But then I have to store it all downstairs in the basement and I like to see my yarn, it inspires me to see, when I look at it, I think, oh, I could make that jumper with that, oh, I could use that. So, now I'm just arguing with myself and recording it, so I should probably just stop talking <laughs> and come to this conclusion alone without boring you to tears. So, if you've made it this far, thank you, thank you for listening to me waffle on, and I will talk to you again in a few weeks, I suppose. My mum, all going well. If nothing else awful happens, or if in the world, or if Corona can just stay away, then my mum should hopefully be visiting me two weeks from today. So, yay! I'm very excited. So, usually I would record every like two to three weeks. So, I might record in three weeks' time. We shall see what happens. But, could be before or after, probably after. It doesn't really matter, but anyway, I will talk to you then. <laughs> Hopefully I'll be a little bit more calm and chilled. I will talk to you next time. Thank you very much for watching. Bye-bye. <laughs>